Hello and welcome to another video, and also welcome to dodgy intro filming because I forgot to film an intro with the camera. We're using the iSight in my laptop right now and it's pretty crap. Today we're going to be installing a working SSD in the iMac and we're also going to be redoing the thermal paste in attempts to get the temperatures down a bit. So the SSD that I found to be working in the iMac, which has been tested, it comes up in disk utility and terminal, is currently in a desktop PC. So what I'm going to do is copy the contents of that drive, which is a SanDisk, onto the drive that doesn't work, which I tried before, which is the Kingston. So the desktop PC can run with that drive and I can take the iMac compatible one. All right, let's get into it. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to clone the SATA SSD from this desktop machine into the one that's gonna work on the iMac. So we're cloning that, which is originally from this desktop machine into this SSD here, and we're gonna do a swap. That clone took 17 minutes, and as you can see, the two drives are now supposedly identical. So I'll remove the original one and see if we can boot off the clone. Here we go, is it gonna, yes, there we go. This is my partner's computer, and that means I can steal this drive and give her the Kingston. What's curious to me is they're both SATA 3 drives, both 120 gig, both have the exact same SATA connectors, but for some reason the controller in this one works with SATA 1 in the iMac. It looks like we're good to go on the Windows machine, and it's perfectly snappy, things seem to be working, so a good success there. So before I install the SSD, I'm actually going to repaste this thing. I've got the back open there, and we're gonna get into it, tear the thing down and repaste it. You wouldn't know it from looking out there, but this room is actually pretty dimly lit, so apologies for the lighting again. We've got this veranda that blocks most of the sun, and also the windows are facing the wrong way, so that is why we're not getting the natural light in here. So I'm following a guide on how to do this from my laptop there. Um, so the first step is to remove these RAM sticks again. Oh, I should definitely get a screw bin, shouldn't I? I already have a few screws in here from a Mac Mini, but we'll just use it anyway. And what I do is I just write what the screws are from on a bit of paper. So I'll get stuck into this teardown and I'll update you when something interesting happens. I've just removed the power supply, guys, and I've got to tell you, that was hell. It took me probably 15 minutes just to get this thing out. There's a horrible latch mechanism down there, and you've got to kind of bend the case towards you and pull it up from the other side. It wasn't fun. This is actually quite a pain to work on. Lots of the older Macs I've found, while you can go in and pretty much fix anything, they're very, very, very tedious to tear down. All right, I'll continue. I'll stop complaining. Oh, guys, that was an absolute nightmare. I finally have the logic board loose, and so I can actually just lift it out. I've unplugged everything. There is a little chip here with some thermal paste on it. I don't know if that's the CPU. It appears to just be making contact with the metal on the back case there. I'm gonna try and take off these four screws here, which I think may release the heatsink on the processor. I've got to be really careful with this thing because there's loads of flimsy capacitors on here so I'm gonna need to find somewhere decent to lay it down. Okay so for that chip that was making contact with the back case I've just cleaned off the thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol and some tissue there so that's looking nice and clean and I've also managed to take off the G5 heatsink from the logic board. So I've cleaned off this die and it is so so small. I have the new thermal paste here ready to go but I'm just a bit anxious because I've never ever repasted a die this small. I've also cleaned off the chip on the other side but I'm gonna do this first and get the G5 heatsink back on. So let's get a blob on there shall we? And I'm gonna spread it around with this guy. I'll just take a bit off first. Man, this is so delicate. The paste I'm using is the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro. I don't know if that's any good, but it's what I've got to hand. Okay, so now we're ready to take the newly cleaned heatsink and place that gently <laughs> over the CPU. So you can see we've also got a thermal pad there which connects to this GPU chip. I'm not gonna bother replacing that. And now I get to do the fun part and go to the other side and screw it in. Honestly, this is a nightmare and I hope I never have to do this again. That's one screw partially in. This is where having small hands like myself actually helps. So that is the heatsink fully screwed in. And now I get to tackle this weird looking chip on the back. Again, I've got some isopropyl alcohol, which I'll use to clean that off. I'll apply the thermal paste to that one and set it back in the case. This project is taking forever, so this is the chip that I've got to repaste over here. Yes, I know I'm pasting vertically here. That is not ideal. All right, I'm happy with that. I don't think it's gonna get any better. Now what I'm gonna do is lift the thing back into the case and hopefully I manage to clear all those awkward wires Okay, so place, oh, hang on. 
There's all sorts of metal pieces I've got to clear as well. Hopefully none of my cables are buried under there. We'll find out shortly. So there's these two really fiddly cables, and from what I understand, they're to control the sleep light on the front of the Mac, and they sort of tuck underneath the logic board. So I'm just going to start by connecting up these wires again. That's the display inverter. This one here is the display cable, which actually requires screws. So that's SATA data, and then SATA power underneath it. It's very, very fiddly, guys. So I'll connect up these fan wires. This one goes into here, and this one into this one here. Oh man, this is stressful. We've also got a miscellaneous fan connector down here. Just going over everything to make sure I haven't lost any wires. And there's these two down here, I believe, these ones are oh, okay. I think I may have jammed a few wires under here, but I can actually go in and pull them out. No idea what that is. Oh, microphone is labeled, and this one is for the speakers, the internal speakers. All right, display cable screws from my handy screw bin over here. Not sure why the display cable wants screwing in. That's actually a common thing I've seen on Macs. All right, what should we do next? Uh, Bluetooth board, why not? And it mounts. Somewhere here. Yes, there we go. So it has a little white connector that actually goes into the logic board itself I should have put in the antenna shouldn't I? So here is the antenna cable If I pull that back off the board that just plugs in down the bottom here. There we go There's the antenna plugged in and I can remount that Next thing I'm going to do is the light board. I guess that's what it's called. They called it the light board on the guide I was using, but I mean, it's got antennas. I don't know. I've just called it the light board. I'm assuming it's actually not that. These fiddly little things were threaded underneath the logic board. I guess I'll try and do that. Luckily, I've not screwed in the logic board yet, or I'd be having a lot of trouble threading these underneath. Ah, yes, of course, these cables don't want to reconnect. Don't ask me why I'm showing you this more in depth as I'm reassembling the thing. That's just how it's happened. All right, both those boards are really connected. These miscellaneous plugs are connected. SATA data and power is connected. Just trying to go through a little mental checklist here. I don't know why there's a bit of tension on the board there. That's mildly worrying. We'll either find out later or it's fine. Hopefully the latter. Okay, so I think that's the logic board fully screwed in again. Next thing I'm going to do is put back in the DVD drive. Apple like using these custom interface controller -y thingies. I'm just going to tuck these fiddly cables back behind this guide here, then place back in the super drive using the DVD drive screws, which are all Phillips by the looks of it. I don't know if this person's watching, but I got a comment saying that it was good how I had all of the oh shit moments in these videos, and I tell you something, with this project there has been an awful lot of oh shit moments. Next on is the fan duct. I just figured out why I'm showing you most of this in reverse. It's because as I was figuring it out, I didn't want to kind of be talking to the camera too much, so I could just concentrate on tearing it down properly. And now that I know what I'm doing, I can actually give you some feedback. So one of the last pieces of the puzzle then is the power supply. So this has the ATX power connector, or I think it's ATX. It looks a little bit different. Maybe it's proprietary. Who knows? It's Apple. And then we've got this ambient light sensor down here. Oh God, and you've got to be so careful not to damage these capacitors. I pull the case back, like I said before, bend the plastic. Oh no, this sucks. Is it going in? Yes. Oh, scary clicking noises. I hate that. And I definitely should have plugged in this connector first, shouldn't I? There's another oh shit moment for you. I wobbled that capacitor a bit and that was terrifying. I hope I didn't break anything. <laughs> this is nerve wracking. I don't know how many times I've said that. Yes, go in. Oh, you can do it. I believe in you. Power's connected and I just got to reconnect this little fiddly cable here. All right, that's plugged back in. Fantastic, now we can put the screws back in. I'm really hoping this actually has a good effect on the temperatures because if it doesn't I've wasted a lot of time here. Now I can take the SanDisk SSD which I did test and it's known to be working in here for some reason and install that. I'm just going to let it dangle. And here's that hard drive temperature sensor as well which I will connect back up. Okay, I'm getting excited now. It's ready to go. Oh, the RAM. How could I forget that? Alright, installing the RAM, one gig stick and the second one gig stick. If I just pull out these little lever things. Okay, they're both in. Temperature sensor, everything's plugged in, looks good. Let's get the back on. Alright, hopefully I've not broken the thing. And there are just a few screws down the bottom here that I need to screw in. Oh, this is nerve-wracking. I hope it's all gone okay. This is well and truly the moment of truth. I am terrified. Oh, yes, it comes on, the little light. This is a great sign. Yes, yes, a bong. The apple bong means all as well. Guys, I cannot tell you how relieved I am that this works. So I'm gonna let that boot from the Tiger DVD, which it appears to be doing now, and then I'll use my funky install method. I'll install Tiger, I'll copy over the leopard image, restore the leopard image to one of the partitions, install leopard, delete Tiger, and delete the install image. And I'll come back to you 
once we're reinstalled. <laughs> oh god, this has been a long journey. So there we go, the drive's partitioning. I had to use a terminal command to wipe the drive because it wouldn't for some reason form up with an Apple partition map. So I cleaned it using terminal and it appears to be going okay. All right. We're finally on Leopard on the iMac G5. I ended up deleting the Tiger partition, but we now have a fresh install of Leopard and it's complete with iLife and iWork. This computer has been running for about 10 minutes now and the temperature at idle is sitting at about 51 degrees Celsius. Obviously it's within normal operating temperature, but considering that the computer's idling, I'm not sure if it's a bit excessively hot. I was hoping for early to mid 40s. In any case, I'm very happy with this machine as it is right now. As I've mentioned a few times, this is gonna be my digital life Mac. And just as a little teaser, I'll show you what I've got over here. iPod Classic, we're gonna do some videos on that. And this is what I've just bought, right? Check this out. Ba 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 ba. Do you know what it is? Any of you? Ooh. We'll have to see in the next video. I might end up repacing this thing again. I'm not sure if I did it right. It's not burning or anything. The, the air coming out of the top is not too hot. So the cooling system is working. And yeah, as I say, 51 degrees idle. It's not the end of the world. Stupidly, I didn't measure the temperatures properly before I did the repaste, but surely nothing can be as bad as that cracked, dry thermal paste that was on the dice to begin with. Also, if you guys are wondering why I can never decide whether I have glasses on or not, it's because this is what it looks like. I have a ring light, and it's just not ideal. All right, thank you for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did down below in the comments. Leave a like. Also, consider subscribing if you're enjoying the series. Bye-bye.